Yo, it's your boy Coinstock here, back at it again, stuffing these duffel bags and collecting that cheddar. Before I begin, please, please, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just a friend trying to educate you. All right, brethren, today we're going to be looking at Terra Luna Classic, you know, looking at some of the news. Well, there's one bit of news I need to look at, but then we're also going to look at a little, like one metric, you know, uh, we'll look at that in a few. And then we're also going to look at some rumors that have been spreading around. And then we're going to see the bigger picture, right? So we're just going to go ahead, get into it. So Terra Luna Classic, it's been kind of on a tear recently. 0 0.00025, 10.5% in the green, right? And this is what it looks like for 24 hours and then seven days. Boom shaka laka. So, and let's go to 14 days. Come on, we're feeling special. All right, so there was this upshoot right here. So, what exactly is going on? Well, there's a few factors that we're going to actually get into. The first of them being GCR, the trader who won a $10 million bet against Do Kwan and shorted Loon C from $95 to $0, is now longing on Luna Classic. All right, so GCR closed his short position today and has been liquidated. His short position made a profit of $5.6 million. All right, boom shakalaka, there it is. But if you now think this is the end of the story, then you are wrong. So supposedly he's longing on Luna Classic and he, uh, up to the mark price around, I think, 23 cents. So I believe that he thinks Luna Classic is going to go to 23 cents. So if there's a mastermind out there that knew that it was going to go down to, from $95 to $0, right, then the mastermind might, you know, stri strike luck again, and then boom shakalaka might go up to 23 uh, since. But what do I know anyway? I'm not a financial advisor or anything. So somebody says, as you can see, GCR is now longing on Luna Classic. So that might be one of the factors there because, you know, there's some, some mastermind out there behind it all. So just, you know, keep be aware. We're all learning here, right? So there's that right there. But then there's also this article I saw talk about why Luna Classic, uh, uh, Luna Z price is soaring, right? And it says the coin's unexpected rally could be attributed to the ongoing governance proposal 10880. It's about unfreezing and updating the IBC Tendermint client 07 Tendermint 71, which references the Cosmos hub. It's important to note that the IBC protocol facilitates communication and value transfer between separate Cosmos chains. When the ecosystem collapsed in May, the Terra Classic network, which was initially a Cosmos chain, had the channels permanently stopped to prevent temporary losses. Re-enabling IBC has become vital to access stalled liquidity and increase the chain's utility as the network now maps a course for recovery. Now, I've already made a video about this. The uh, well, I'd say a few days ago, and uh, I went more into depth of how this is a good thing. There'd be more capital inflows, and there'd be more chain utility, right? But this is all good news, and plus, this would be beneficial to Cosmos too, because there's like a bustling community around this project, right? And well, everybody knows this, right? Everybody's trying to see at least the twenty-three cents, right? What that uh, guy in, behind the wraps is doing, so yeah. I mean, and there's more stuff down here. So according to Venus, a Terra, a Terra Rebel and the core team project manager projects on Cosmos chains may ch projects on Cosmos chains may choose to incorporate Terra Luna Classic as a payment option once IBC is reopened in order to draw in its vibrant community. All right. And another proposal, 5234. Apart from the proposal of re-enabling IBC, Proposal 5234 reduced the burning tax from 1.2% to 0.2% and made the Terra Classic one of the industry's most hyped up topics. And due to this proposal, billions of Luna Classic tokens will get removed from circulation, thus increasing demand and helping the token rally in price. All right. And then there's listing rumors, which I went more into depth about. Like, this is what the rumors we're going to kind of look at real quick is that the, um, we'll look out at later on in the video, is that the Luna Classics gains were further fueled by reports that the project would be listed on Coinbase on Monday. Although the authenticity of this rumor is yet to be ascertained, which is true, it seems like everybody's kind of spreading this rumor, but who knows? We'll have to see Monday, right? So let's go ahead and look at Cap because there's also like a huge number. So 
The volume in 24 hours is 607 million. And it's like going down to 605, you know. But it's been steady at this level for 24 hours. So it's showing that this chain is actually extremely active right it's 158.66 percent in the green so this is actually quite unusual so take that note too but also there's <clears throat> supposedly conversation just now do Kwan says luna classic luna alliance is very possible with an upgrade on the luna classic side right and then it goes uh it lists on a whole bunch of stuff, so some quick thoughts, Luna Classic and Luna. What if we envisioned a twin uh, moons in the sky scenario where the whole was greater than the sum of the parts? Luna gets upgraded to parity. Some Luna apps being built could launch on Luna Classic 2. Uh, interchain alliance between Luna Classic and Luna. Luna Classic staking rewards are high and desirable. And reward post-crash Luna Classic holders who create Terra Station wallets for interacting with Luna 2. <coughs> Excuse me. And many hundreds of thousands of new wallets were created in the last few months. And hold on real quick. And like down the road, I'm imagining the possibilities for line incentives and stuff like games where the Luna Classic crowd could go head to head with Luna, etc. And there's many reasons too. And supposedly this is Do Kwan, and I would love to believe that this is Do Kwan, but you know, who knows, right? He says, forming a, an alliance with Luna Classic isn't hard as long as a software upgrade proposal can pass from that side. So... There was a conversation, you know, with Do Kwan, and I think he seems kind of down with uh, integrating with Luna Classic, but I don't know. This is all rumor. Don't get too hype, right? And plus, I'm not a financial advisor. Just just got to say that again. So, yeah. So, there's that, right? And there's one more bit of rumor that we got to talk about, right? Well, not rumor. It's just fact. Is the, the stake supply, <clears throat> which is just absolutely bullish, too. And... It's going on the up and up, and then it jumped right in between October 20th and November 1st, right? And now it's still steadily increasing, too. So all these factors are leading up to this Terra Luna booming price. I mean, I'm, I'm not a financial advisor. You know, I, what do I know anyway? I'm just keeping you up to date, right? But, yeah, that's, that's kind of bustling. But not only that, not only that, it's also Bitcoin as a whole like we haven't seen 21,000 and probably like I'd say about like six months but yeah that's honestly I mean that's all I had in the news for Luna Classic today but I thought it was inter interesting enough news to tell you guys about because it's all connected really like <laughs> like good press bad press it's still it's still press right but what do I know anyway I'm just keeping you up to date on the down low so uh I guess I'll uh See you guys later.